as a team, this team is as good as any as I've seen in a very, very, very long time in terms of, of their, their completeness. And, and as you said, Johnny, uh, you don't see the individual play uh, necessarily. You see them playing as a group. The great teams we had before, well, they, they hung the bell. Madre Hill was a bell cow. Harold Harris. And, and, and this team doesn't have an Isaac Davis or a Harold Harris uh, or, or a Vincent Bradford or a, a, a Burks. You know, and, and the list just goes on and on of great individual players just came through. And you and you, you, you hit the nail on the head. Now, we've got some outstanding linebackers in, in you know, with, with Je Devin Ball and uh, Kevin. We, but uh, we, you know, and, and, and Grady Allison's really the, the, the one player we got that, that's a D1 pos prospect that's getting looked at. And I'm just reiterating, backing up what you said, Mike. This is a this is a solid team. I mean, nothing real great anyway, but they really do they really do well. The uh, captains have met at midfield. The Lappers will be getting the ball to start tonight. They will be moving away from the Bill Hunt Fieldhouse. And uh, guys, we've talked about this being a defensive team for the most part this year. Tonight, the offense gets. Uh, the opportunity uh, to kind of set the tone for the Leopards. Johnny, while we've got a moment, uh, I believe you've got tonight's isolated player of the game. Mike, our isolated player of the game is number eight, Devin Ball. And uh, he's, he has stepped up this year and played a wonderful defense. That linebacker has been all over the field this, this year, as well as his partner, Ke uh, Kevin Bell, at linebacker. But Devin Ball is, will be our isolated player of the game today, and we salute his play. He is a <clears throat> senior. He's 5'11", 222. Of course, he plays a little bit of fullback, but the majority is linebacker. So uh, we salute his play tonight. And the Leopards. Huddling up at midfield as we await the, the uh, McGee Owls to come on the field. I'm not sure if the folks from Guinness are here tonight, but I am guessing this is the widest run-through side <laughs> in the history of run-through side. We'll be back in just a moment. Here at Malvern High School. My favorite thing about Melvin would have to be the teachers because all of them are personable. The thing I like about Melvin is that you meet college dollars while you're in high school. The thing I like the most about Melvin is we're striving to improve on all of our standardized tests. Passion, pride, and excellence. Malvern High School. But this Malvern squad will start out, as we said, on offense. Yeah, this is the uh, first time that McGee has been back in the playoffs since 05, and uh, uh, they're, they're against, uh, against a little bit tougher opponent, I think, than, than what they're used to seeing. Grant Gill, the quarterback for the Owls, is teeing the ball up. They've got somewhat a huddled formation behind Gill. Leopards setting up for the possibility of an onside kick. The deep man for the Leopards is Dontell Henson. The odd backs of Jamerson and King have walked up to about the 25-30 yard line. We'll wait and see if McGee spreads out for a what would be considered a normal kickoff. So far they haven't. Now they fake the onside and spread back out to the Malvern return team. Resumes its normal position. You get the feeling McGee's gonna try everything they can tonight. And Gill gets the kick away, bounds at about the 26-yard line, gets by Jamerson. He picks it up at the 20, looking for some room, cuts the outside, breaks the tackle with the 25, and he'll be brought down at about the 28-yard line. Well, Mike, they, they found a dead spot to kick it to, and it bounds around the 25, right in the middle of no man's land, and uh, Jamerson picks it up and returns it maybe 10 yards. But uh, not before Malvern's got a pretty good field position at the 28. The first and 10 for Malvern here on the opening possession. Guys looking across the sideline and looking uh, down at the, the uh, roster. Not a lot of kids on this McGee squad. You're liable to see a lot of kids going both ways. Yeah, that's what Fog Coach Fogelman said, that they had, had that their studs really had to go both ways. So hopefully it's uh, play them tough and wear them down the second half. Let me start off with trailer and quarterback tonight. As Henson to his right, takes a snap, gives to Henson up the middle. Henson bounces, 
Gets across the 35, over the 40-yard line. It's a first down for Malvern on the opening play. Wonderful job. Kenan Bell seals off the inside, uh, out on the right-hand side as he's pulling, and, and just breaks Henson for a big gain near the 44-yard line. That's a good start. Uh, now, like you say, uh, Kevin did an excellent job there, and, and, and Henson just waited till, uh, till it opened up on him. Got a, got a different look out there at tailback now, Mike. Jamison in at tailback. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Snap and to give to Jamerson. Looking for room on the right side. He is knocked down as he picks up about three yards on the play. Almost four to be, we'll go ahead and call it second down and six. Guys, yeah, same, same play, opposite side. And then Bell was uh, pulling over to the side. And the, uh, the defensive lineman strung it out long enough and held on to Jamerson, pulls him down, but not, not before a three-yard gain on the play. Nice positive yards on first and ten. Uh, second and six is a whole lot different. It gives you, gives you some more options to play. Jamerson still in at tailback. Trailer sets up in shotgun. Brings Brian in motion. Gives Jamerson up the middle across midfield, and he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line of the Owls. It will be third down and a long three yards, about three and a half. Yeah, the ball has to get very near the 45-yard line for a first. It's going to be a long three and a half yards for the first, but uh, Malvern is on uh, the Owls' side of the field. Jamerson comes to the sideline as Henson comes back in for the Leopards. Third down and three. Trailer will be stepping under center, has trips left. One man to his right, Henson alone in the backfield. Trailer turns, gives Henson up the middle, looking for him. He's got the first down as he goes over the 45, down to the 43-yard line. Boy, Henson did a good job that time twirling and out of the hands of the defender and uh, getting extra yards, didn't he, Johnny? Boy, Henson seems like he's got a quick step tonight. He can get to the, the hole very quickly, and, and before the defense of the Owls even get close to him, he gets the first down with ease. Henson comes back to the sideline as Jamerson re-enters the game. First and 10 for Malvin at the 43-yard line. Trailer sets up in shotgun. Two receivers to his left, one to his right. The give this to Jamerson again. Squeezes through, makes the first man miss. Picks up a good seven, maybe eight yards. Guys, there was a wonderful push by the offensive line anchored by Seth Coates. And, uh, and when you've got men being pushed back, as they did on that play, you're going to have a big gainer on first down. Boy, Quentin Welch and, and uh, big old Grady Austin did an excellent job, but uh, Welch on that side, on that right side, did a great job opening the hole. Second down, three yards from the 37. Trailer still working out of shotgun. Takes a snap. The give, the give, again the give, rather. Up the middle this time, not much running room there. And a slight loss on the play for Jamerson. Guys, the linebackers for the house, just they did not wait for the play to come to them. They blitzed and caught Malvern in a, a deep handoff and, uh, and stopped the play immediately. That's kind of like the Malvern of the Leopard is just probing, probing, probing on the inside and uh, uh, expecting to go wide here soon. Third down and three now for Malvern. Davis in in a slot position. The give is to... Jamison, Jamison across the 30 at the 25, breaks away from a man down to the 20-yard line, finally run out of bounds at the 19, and an outstanding effort by Mario Jamison. Yeah, around the 25-yard line, Jamison just gives him <coughs> a stiff arm, throws him off of him, and he gets another seven yards down at the 20-yard line. John, you made an excellent point about Jamerson, different with Jamerson. Hints a little bit. Jamerson's a year older, a little bit thicker. He's got a little bit, looks like a little bit more upper body strength to, like you said, to use that hammer of a, four, of a free... Uh, go ahead. I'll say it in a minute. <laughs> Trailer working out of shotgun is Jamerson to his left. Now looks to throw King in the flat. Pass is complete. King at the 15, the 10, going towards the end zone, and he is... In for the touchdown, we've got a flag down on the play. Looks like it'll be face mask against the McGee Owls. Wow, he's just key. He was wide open. Then he gives a shake and bake to the, the corner, and he went for it, and he went along the side, and the only person who could catch him is the safety, and he grabbed his face mask as he was going in the end zone. Stiff arm was the word I was looking for a while ago. Stiff arm. <laughs> I knew he'd come to you. <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds late. That's okay, <laughs> stiff arm. <laughs> Great, great run and catch by Jane Ken. I'll take trailer later right out there where it had to be, and then King just did a real good job of uh, 
uh, of getting into the end zone. Alfonso uh, Torres on to kick the extra point for Malvin. The kick is away, and it is good. The Memphis leads 7 to nothing. 8.25 to go here in the first quarter of play. We'll be back at Claude Mann in just a moment. Hi, I'm Josh. It up, Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season for my elevens. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings, an 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer a Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Let's get back at Claude Mann Stadium where the Lampers lead 7 to nothing. 8.25 to go here in the first quarter. So the Lampers open the game with about a 75, I'm trying to remember, we started about the 25 yard line. So it'll be a 75 yard drive for Malvin. <laughs> it looks like if they put, uh, whether, I don't know if you have the choice or not, Johnny, but anyway, the uh, face mask on King, that penalty is applied on the Lampers kicking off. And they will be kicking off from the. Uh, Owls, the McGee Owls 45 yard line. The Lepers have an awful, awful nice opportunity now, Johnny, to pin them and pin them deep quick. Well, uh, here's an opportunity just to throw it out there. They could almost go for an onside kick and they, they would yeah. wouldn't be giving up something, you know? So maybe that might be in the arsenal. Dante Racy and Isaiah Holmes are the deep men. Torres gets the kick away, and it's going to go into the end zone for a touchback. So the McGee Owls will start at the 20-yard line. I think we had 12 on the floor. Anyway, too difficult to keep up with at this point. There's several entering the field of play and leaving the field of play. Good crowd here at Claude Mann Stadium, as expected, for the first round of the playoffs. Nice crowd cut from McGee. Uh, probably about a two and a half, two, two and a half hour drive up and uh, good representation for the Owls over there. Grant Gill is the quarterback for the Owls. They are a one oriented offense and we should see quite a bit here early. Give is to the first man through. That's number 34, to Cambry Green. To Cambry with a good pickup for the Owls, about five. They'll get up to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down. It's almost like a wing T type yeah. uh, offense. They just turn around and hand it off and yeah. stew the body right and stew the body left. Coach Fogelman said they, they would really tighten up, have uh, real narrow gaps, and uh, we expect to see a lot what, what we saw last week at the Queen. Again, tie formation for the Owls as Gill steps under center. Trying to get the outside this time is Green, and the Lampard send this one up quickly. Guys, hey, I tell you what, Grady Olson just stops him in his tracks. Maybe a gain on, of a yard, but Kevin Bell and Mitchell Whitman and a host of Leopards get up there and, and make the stop with a short gain on the play. All right. Big third down here, the Leopards are stopping right here and uh, trying to get a turnover and get the ball back to them and uh, need to stop the Owls right here on this first possession. Third and four is Gill steps under center, full backfield, three men line up in the backfield. Gill takes a snap, gives, and that is Green again. Green gets up to the 30-yard line. That'll be enough for the first down as he gets up to the 31. It's going to be a hard-fought football game up there in the trenches because that's the type of offense that they run. Is just they're going to search and find that gap, and he just slides in for an easy first down. He's near the 32-yard line. Well, Johnny, what they're doing too, and like you said earlier, they're, they're overloading. They're overloading one way, overloading, switching back and forth. And uh, yeah, these defensive coaches will make whatever justice need to be. But uh, they're like you said, they're overloading, trying to overpower you. First down and ten for McGee. Gill takes a stab, gives Green again, Green up to the 34 and hit very hard there. Terrence Jackson leading it and stopping him in the hole and then Kevin Bell finishes him off with the Leopards. Well, you know, this is where he, that uh, it's, it does well for the Leopards with, with the depth and everything because uh, I tell you what, taking a lick like that, will, will, you know, take, half of that will take a lot of it out of you. 
Second down, about seven for the Owls. Gill again up under center. Gill looks to throw, and the play is stopped before he gets underway. Gill, uh, excuse me, uh, Gill or number one, Michael Curry, either one of them, they will drop back and, 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 and throw the ball. Uh, I think Gill had, uh, he had a, had a big week last week. Uh, a couple touch, a couple running touchdowns and uh, completed five or six big, five or six plays. So they will throw the ball, uh, but it's going to be one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're not going to spread it out and throw the ball all over either, Johnny. No, I did not, not from what I've seen so far. Penalty of uh, five yards, false start against McGee. Penalty moves the ball back to the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and 12 for the Owls. McGee again under center. Brings a man in motion to the near side. McGee looking to throw. Over the middle pass is incomplete. Trent Bryant had the coverage. Pass was intended for number six, Kendall Lambert, and then that one was well over his head. It'll bring up third down and 12. Guys, it, it appears that the quarterback for McGee is, is hobbling a little bit. That's possibly the reason why the ball was airing way over his head. And if that's the case, his ankle must be hurt. You know, Johnny, another, another thing I was going to fight, you know, a, a, a ground control game like this, a five-yard penalty back on them really hurts them. Very similar last week. Yeah. Gill again up under center, third down and 12. Looks up in the backfield, Gill looking for room to the outside. He's going to be wrapped up in a hurry at the 30-yard line, and almost every leopard on the field gets in on the tackle. Wow. Yeah, it's uh, nowhere to roam, nowhere to go, nowhere to throw, and uh, leopards everywhere. <clears throat> Wonderful play by the defense. The well, last, last man there, I think, was actually King. Uh, he was playing a deep safety position, and he was within three yards of the tackle. Yeah, the free safety comes flying in just to get, yeah, to get a little bit of the action. So McGee now set to kick. The punter sets up back at his own 17-yard line. King and Bryant, the deep man for Malvin, short kick. Is going to bound at the 35, takes a McGee roll, and down to the 37, 38-yard line of the Leopards. So good starting field position for the Leopards on their second possession of the game. Guys, an outstanding crowd here. I guess it was a late-arriving late crowd. I see a lot of deer hunters in their orange, Johnny, but I tell you, I tell you the reason why... The Malvern's got a great crowd tonight. My dad showed up for this ball game. <laughs> I saw Charlie. He's there. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. yeah. He hadn't been to a game since, what, 89? Probably. <laughs> since, uh, since you graduated. Two receivers to the left, one to the right for Trailer and the Leopards. Trailer takes a snap, face to give. Swing pass to Llewellyn low, but he gets it across the 40 to 45. Hit gets away across midfield, and Llewellyn's going to be dragged down at the 36-yard line on the Owls. Wow. He just broke away. He he ducked up underneath the tackle around an eight-yard eight gain, and then he just <laughs> sprung out of there. And Johnny, that's got that's, another 20 yards. That's not even mentioning the fact he took that one off the top of the grass. Yeah, it is a shattering catch. That Martin was catch. a play that the Leopards have really used well last week, and then David got it out there, and then great catch by Llewellyn. Great run afterwards. Llewellyn and Bryant have split to the left side. King alone on the right side. As Trailer steps under center, gives to Jamerson, right side, across the 35, across the 30-yard line, weaving his way downfield, and Jamerson gets down to the 20-yard line. It's another first down for Malvern. Broke down containment on the outside, and the speed of Jamerson just went boiling by the cornerback and gets the additional 15 yards on the carry. If you're just joining us, the Leopards lead 7 to nothing after scoring on their opening possession. 4.26 to go here in the first quarter, and the Leopards looking to add to that lead. Guys, uh, Ken, uh, excuse me, David Trailer is 2 for 2 on the, uh, early in this ballgame. Trailer again working out of shotgun. 
as Jamison set up to his left. Thanks to give. Now looking to throw towards the end zone. Looking at Brian. Brian was open and the pass was incomplete. Johnny, you spoke just too soon. Well, a little bit too much pressure in the backfield. Crashing linebackers again. Thinking it's going to run. Kind of a run blitz. And inst instead, they get in David Trailer's face. But uh, right. trying to get it out there to Trent Bryant that's running the post pattern. What do I want you to watch on TV tomorrow? Trailer looks the safety off. Trailer looks out to the flare out here to Llewellyn. And the safety comes running up and leaves uh, – at least Trent Bryant alone down there and, and uh, just a miscommunication that would have been some great look off by Trailer. Bryce to Barnes split to the near side ball on the far hash mark two receivers to the right Trailer takes a snap give off the left side is Henson or excuse me that is Henson inside the 10, down to the six-yard line. I wanted to make sure that they've been doing a lot of substituting and running back. Yeah, but keeping that, those legs fresh, Johnny. They are just so quick tonight in the, in the backfield, and McGee just cannot find a solution for uh, Henson and Jamerson's uh, combination. <laughs> Well, the thing about it, too, is that I think, you know, Don Taylor says he can run. Now, now we got them both in there, guys. This is a call. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. King and Bryant on the far side, and Barnes on the near side. Bring Bryant in motion. We've got yeah. flags down before the play is, uh, before the ball is yeah. snapped, rather. And this one's probably going to go against the left. It's five yard to move the ball back to the 12. Yeah, I think Jamerson wanted to get up there and, and uh, get a lick on that, get a lick on his man to block. And his, that's the first time that I can remember. It's been a while since we've seen both Henson and Jamerson in the field at the backfield at the same time, Johnny. Uh, that's very true. And also, from what I can see, that we're physically bigger up front than the uh, the Owls are. That's that meaning that we, we can blow them off the, the ball. Same formation for the Lepers. Trailer working out a shotgun. Brings Ryan motion. Now Gill up the middle. That is Henson. Henson inside the five. Touchdown, Melvin. Nice run, Johnny. Guys, they, they just suckered him with that uh, reverse look. With Trent Bryant coming across and hands it off inside. And uh, Henson basically goes in untouched uh, besides bumping into the referee. <laughs> I was going to say the butt referee put the hardest hit on him. 13 to nothing lead. Torres looks to make it 14 with 3.32 to go here in the first quarter. The kick is away, low shot, and it is good. The Lepers lead 14 to nothing. We'll be back at Clark Man in just a moment. You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. Thinking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Back at Clark Bath Stadium where the Leopards have taken an early 14 to nothing lead. 3.32 to go here in the first quarter as Torres tees it up to kick off to the Owls. Well, good, good start for the Malvern Leopards. Two scoring drives <clears throat> has come out on top and uh, giving uh, the Owls a second chance on their second. Oh, good there. deep kick by Torres. Bounds at the 10-yard line, picked up there at about the 9. Coming across the field now at the 15. The tackle will be made at the 20. On the return was Isaiah Holmes. Well, I'll tell you what, the leg of Torres, we had him as our isolated player last week. And uh, he almost came through with about a, what, a 52-yard field goal there at the end of the half. A 50-yard exactly. He, listen, he, he nailed that kickoff. Great kick. Great weapon to have. Yeah, it's pinning him at the 20-yard line. That's just the same. <coughs> it's, <laughs> yeah, same thing as, 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 uh, as a touchback. So, Malvern, great pursuit on, on uh, kickoff coverage. Gill, once again, under center. Brings a man in motion. Pitch near size. They try to get to the open side of the field. Now Green cuts, and he's hit at the 20. Breaks away slightly. He'll get oh, what a up to about the 22-yard <laughs> line. The Green not finding much running room to the outside. Uh, they're going to find out that our lateral speed just as quick as their running backs, yeah. and they try to turn around and give a real quick pitch to the, to the man in motion and trying to get it outside, and Malmer still had great pursuit. Good job by number 10, that's uh, Cortez, Cortez Smith on the outside, and he did a great job containing it. 
we're seeing more and more of Smith playing. He played quite a bit last year, last week and the week before, and uh, he's, I believe he's played himself into some, a lot of playing time because he's really doing a good job. We've got a timeout on the field as McGee wants to talk things over. 2.50 to go here in the first quarter. Malvern leads 14 to nothing. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Enjoy your life. We make financial security easy. We're Malvern National Bank. We've got the strength to help you build a solid financial future. We're Malvern National Bank. Back at Claude Man Stadium, once again the Lamp is leading 14 to nothing, and we are in the first quarter of play, 250 to go here in the first quarter, and the Owls starting their second possession. Fast moving game just like last week, only difference is uh, the Leopards have had two quicker uh, times with the ball because they've uh, been they've had the uh, Owls three and out, and uh, actually they made one first and ten, but uh, two possessions, two touchdowns, and Lep Leopards lead this one 14 to nothing. Gill will step under center, there's two receivers to the near side of the field, two men in the backfield. Give this to Green again, hit immediately, and he'll be dropped very near the line of scrimmage. You get maybe a yard on the play. It'll be third down. Where again, that's Smith came right into him, and then Austin follows him up as as, as well as Seth Coates getting in on the tackle. Well, I tell you what, Scarborough, Coach Scarborough, and Coach Free have really done an excellent job getting this defense prepared. And guys, if you you'll notice there on their defense. Doing a lot of substituting. We're also bringing in and switching out a D back for a line back, yeah, yeah, and doing that quite a bit. Gill up under center, third down for the Owls. Gill up the middle, and that will not be enough for the first as the running back Curry gets up to the 27 yard line. It'll be about three, almost four yards shy of the first. Yeah, the ball's got to get over the 30 yard line. They're around the the, the 26 and a half, maybe 27 yard line, and uh, here comes the punt team. Only one deep man for Malvern. Normally they set up with two. Yeah, we got it. We, we gave them a first and 10 there, right there. We had too many men on the field. Now we call a timeout. Yeah, timeout? Okay. Woo. Close. That's close because yeah we had on yeah we had 12 men on and uh, yeah we good, were good, good good catch by the coaching staff. A minute 43 to go here in the first quarter. We've got a timeout on the field. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Josh. It up, Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season for my leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings. An 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer a Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Again, we return to Claude Man Stadium. Lepers leading 14 to nothing. A minute 43 to go in the first quarter. And the McGee Isles face a fourth down and four. Yeah, I, you wouldn't think that they would uh, risk a going for it here, you know, this early in the ball game, this deep in their own territory, but I'm sure the Leopards would welcome them to do it. James King sets up deep for Malvin. Bryant, who's normally deep with King, sets up on an outside receiver type setup. The kick is away, short kick. It is going to hit at the Malvin 44-yard line. Takes a rather neutral roll. It's down to the 45. You made a good catch while ago, you and Johnny. I'm watching number seven, the quarterback, and he is gipped up for some reason. I don't know whether it's a, a, a leg or an ankle or something, Johnny, but, you know, he's out there, and, and uh, he's out there playing uh, either a strong or free safety, depending upon the lineman. And you got to be playing a strong but, safety. There's no way he can play deep and, get, and cover anybody. Yeah, he's he, them pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. It seems like to be is his right ankle. Trader will set up in shotgun. There's two men to his left, one to his right. The Leopards are on the near hash mark. Two running backs in the backfield. He gives to Jamerson. Cuts up across the 45 in midfield. He's at the 40. 
from 35 to 30, cuts towards the sideline and is run out of bounds. And it looks like we've got a flag down on the play. I'm afraid that uh, James King got tangled up with the <clears throat> with one of the D-backs and that uh, didn't let him go. We're going to get assessed a 10-yard penalty, but it be enough for a first down. You know what, that, that, what happens out there, too, and it's, uh, it's something Coach Petrino said that the Razorbacks have to do. Those wideouts, when they go to blocking, if they lock those, those guys up long enough, they're going to call holding on them no matter what, and uh, that's what happened. King was with his man, with his man. He may have just had him locked up too long. Uh, he did, and, and when the defender tried to roll off of him he still had a hold of him while Jamerson was trying to get by him so I'm <clears throat> going to back him up 10 yards but still a gain of 20 for the net 20 for the Malvern Leopards yeah ball moved to the 35 yard line of McGee Leopards 127 left here in the first quarter the Leopards leading this in 14 to nothing trying to get seven more guys to the seamless to either side forward trailer As he surveys the defense, he will step under center. Takes a snap, give, up the middle. That is Henson again. He'll get up to the 30-yard line, pick up a five on the play. It'll be second and five. Good job by Henson, just dashing into the line of scrimmage, trying to hit that seam, and uh, hits the linebacker and leans falls forward for another two or three yards. I fully expect that the coaching staff to pick up this number seven limping and uh, send it somebody, because he's playing that free safety back there, send somebody down the middle because he will not be able to keep up with them. Jamerson comes into the ball game for the Leopards. King goes split to the far side. Bryant and Llewellyn split to the near side. Jamerson alone in the backfield. His trailer steps under center, takes a snap, gives to Jamerson. Up the middle, hit at the 30. He'll get down to the 29, maybe the, well, right at the 29-yard line, depending on which uh, the sideline official they go with. Johnny, do you think the Leopards now are getting into four-down territory as well as this defense has been holding their offense? Oh, yes, for sure. I think the Malvern <clears throat> is about to flip sides because we're about to run out of time in the first quarter. But still, yes, the way Malvern has the opportunity to go on, on two more downs to get that first down. they got to get across the 25-yard line for the first. The play clock and the game clock are almost in sync. Yeah. As Trailer steps under center, five seconds to go in the quarter, takes a snap, give, left side. Trying to get to the outside is Jameson. He's going to be wrapped up back at the 30-yard line, and that'll bring up fourth down for the Leopards. But that's the end of the first quarter of play, and the Leopards lead this one 14 to nothing. Well, guys, even if they do go Malvern, if they do punt, they're only going to net 12 yards if they punt it in the end zone. So, you know, it's probably not a bad choice to go ahead and do something where you get positive yards or, you know, maybe if you didn't even get the first down, you, you, you've got to get across the 25-yard line. You can't help but think the way they've, they've sucked up, sucked up the backs and the linebackers that, that the Leopards won't try to go to James King again or, or possibly uh, Trent Bryant. And, and, you know, another one out there, guys, old Briston Barnes, he kind of slips around, slips around, and all of a sudden he makes a big play. So there's lots of weapons, lots of different ways the Leopards can go on this one. Not only that, I see where number 43, Trent Block, has gone into the huddle. So, uh... Prince, that sophomore we had, we had talked about earlier, and uh, heck of a ball player. Well, Leopards, if, if they were to go for the field goal, of course, that would be almost a 50-yard attempt again. Now, I, I don't think that's going to be the call. Obviously, it's not as the offense goes back onto the field. Most definitely. I think that they're going to try to find King or, or Barnes or, you know, one of the receivers downfield, a, a real good conservative pass and a high percentage and go with that one. Fourth down and six as we get the second quarter underway. Two receivers yeah. come to the near side. That is King and Bryant. One man split to the far side. Trailer working out of shotgun. Takes a snap. Thanks to give. Drops straight back. Looks to throw. Has a man towards the end. We're looking for King. Touchdown, Marvin. Wow. Oh, what a wow. James King lays out for that one. I wasn't sure if he had gotten it. And the Leopards have just extended their lead now to 20 to nothing. Well, that's what I was talking about, Johnny, earlier. The 
they had one old man King with number seven out there, and, and uh, he just can't keep up with him. But uh, Trader laid it out there almost a little bit too far. James King does an excellent job of going and getting it, Mike. Torrey is on to kick the extra point for Malvin. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is good. 21-0, Malvin leads McGee, 11.52 to go here in the half. We'll be back at Claude Mann in just a moment. Thinking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Back at Claude Mann Stadium where the Leopards lead this one now. 21 to nothing as we have barely gotten the second quarter underway. 11.52 to go here in the half. Well, as, as the game progresses, Johnny, and, and the Leopards pile up scores, it, it's, uh, it gets tougher and tougher and tougher for this McGee offense. Doesn't it? it will because, you know, they're, <clears throat> they're a uh, control-the-clock type tempo of offense, and they haven't been able to move the ball very well against Mowron defense. Torres gets the kick away. Going to be fielded at the 10-yard line. 15 to 20. Spins out of a tackle, now going to be dropped at the 24. <laughs> I tell you what, Quante Walker, 10th grader, was really down there, number 42. Catch us tomorrow, 4 o'clock, Channel 13. Our friends at Southern Link will bring you the complete playback of this ball game with the first playoff round of the state playoffs. The mighty Malvern Leopards against the Owls from McGee. Guys, that was, that was the second time Quante Walker got down there and made a good tackle on, on uh kickoff coverage. Walker shows great speed and great ability. Guys, I'd like to highlight Devin Ball here a little bit. He, <laughs> he hadn't had much opportunity since they've been stopping the, the Owls on first down. Looking to throw is Gill. Passes tipped out. Picked off. Almost picked off by the isolated player of the game, Devin Ball. Devin says he's got it. And uh, the referees, the side judge, the back judge, all said no. So, uh, <laughs> I'll, ask on you. I'll ask Devin. Devin will, Devin will go to his grave saying he intercepted that one. Uh, yeah. Great play. Great. Had a great play. opportunity at yeah. it. And unfortunately, drops to the ground by the referees. And uh, Mallard's stiff defense stiffens once again. Couldn't tell who battered the ball in there. It was blocked at the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. Like there may have been some early movement. The play's blown dead, and the Owls, I believe, are going to have to back up five yards. Wow. There was four Leopards over on that play anyway, and that was a, that was a loss. Uh, they were going to lose lose Yardy Janna down. But uh, don't get a chance on that one, Johnny. Not one to... Uh, well, it's just going to be tough. You're putting yeah. yourself in a hole uh, when you've got a, a real good defense and your and your offense is based on three three yards and a cloud of dust, and, and they haven't been able to move it very well. 11:40 here left in the first half. The Leopards lead this with 21 to nothing, and uh, I've got the McGee Owls in a hole, Mike. Absolutely, the defense. Uh, Pretty jacked up right now. They feel like they can they can handle these guys, and almost came up with the ball just moments ago. Gill steps under center since two receivers out to his right. Leopard show blitz. McGill, McGee rather. Gill throws it out of bounds. There it is. There comes the flag. There'll be a loss of down. Yeah, as well as the penalty. Yeah, he cannot. That's <laughs> intentional grounding. That's going to be a loss of down and a penalty. That's going to bring up third down long. I'm going to tell you what, it's, you, just, you can't help but feel a little bit sorry for the quarterback. He's gipped up back there, and they're about to roll him up. And uh, the penalty actually cost him more than what the sack would have cost him, didn't it, Johnny? Wow. Plus loss of down. At the, si at the spot of the foul, and then they're near the one-yard line where they spotted the ball. So it is going to be, they're still showing second down. I I thought it was, there it goes, third, third down. down. They called illegal forward pass, but unfortunately it's, he was trying to throw it out of bounds. Could not do that. And uh, now brings up a run down, down about 33. Yeah, third in the career. 
Yale steps under center. Three receivers this time. Swing pass, near side pass is incomplete and it will be fourth down and guys, Leopards may bring the heat here on this play. I would, I'd, matter of fact, I'd have King about the 25 yard line and then I'd have everybody kind of try to come up but you do not want to run into the kicker. The Leopards have <laughs> they've been pretty successful the last two games at, at block and punch, block yeah, all and, and you all year have got one last week for a touchdown. But on the other hand, we're going to receive wonderful yeah. field position. Why give that up for potentially trying to run into a kicker? Punter sets up with his heels on the goal line, gets the kick. Oh, oh, and it goes oh, almost oh, sideways. Thank you. Oh, I like the McGee roll to the 20 yard line. They'll spot it at the 21, and the Leopards are going to have a very short field to work with with 11.25 to go here in the first half. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. The, the yeah. guys that are receiving the punts, and you get up there around 25-yard punts, this guy cannot punt it very far. Catch it, call for it, and dead it right there. You know, that's one thing Malvern needs to, to, to prepare themselves to catching these punts. Unfortunately, you know, the shank. You know what happened, what I've noticed too, guys. M McGill, or excuse me, Gill, the quarterback, was a major part of their offense last week, and he just can't run. And then, and, and that's that that's really limits to a lot of things they can do. Trailer takes a snap, gives to Henson, up, or fakes to give rather. Pass thrown underneath. They're gonna say incomplete, incomplete rather. Pass intended for Keeney. Looked like a defender got a, got a hand on that ball. Yeah, he, he tried to throw it through the hands, and unfortunately, it goes dead on it. But <clears throat> trying to get out there for Jared Davis and uh, oh, Jacob, with, Jacob Keeney. Was it Keeney? I'm yeah. Sorry. Jacob was out there all alone. Had had some uh, had some room to run, and was was wanting to go. He's had one touchdown this year, and uh, I tell you what. Junior does an outstanding job there playing that tight end, blocking and, uh, and catching. Trailer working out of shotgun as Henson set up to his right. Takes a snap, gives to Henson. Splits defenders, goes across the 15, he's at the 10, and going to be brought down just shy of the six yard line. That was a polar. <laughs> Man, what a play. That was definitely one to watch tomorrow at, at 4 o'clock. I think if James King would have got his block out of the way, uh, Dante would have scored, don't you? He is. <laughs> Dante Henson's about two steps quicker than anybody on defense. The Owls' pride is, is left in McGee, and uh, they, their hopes are dashed right now if they allow the Mallard to get in. Leopards leading 21 to nothing, looking to add to their lead. Give up the middle, Jamerson. Jamerson hit at the five, and he'll be stopped just inside the five yard line. They're gonna spot him at the four. Gain of about two. That'll bring up second down. Big old number 35, I think that's Justin Davis for the McGee Owls. Uh, he's a pretty good sized looking kid. Second down and goal from the 40 yard line as the Leopards come back to the line of scrimmage. Barnes and Bryant go split to the far side. James King split to the near side. Henson and Jamerson in the backfield with Trailer. Trailer working out a shotgun. Gives Jamerson again. He is wrapped up in the backfield. And a good play there by number 17, Braxton Baird. Yeah, and the Leopards are going to come up with third down and goal from just outside the 10. Whatever the Leopards showed in there, Johnny, they, they had scouted that play. I mean, they were all over it. Yeah, they, it appears it was just an all-out blitz, run blitz. And uh, they were keeping their eyes on 26 and 22, and they were going to wrap them up in the backfield. Now Llewellyn, Bryant, and Barnes go split to the far side. James King alone on the right side of the field. Leopards on the right hash mark. King got one-on-one -on -one coverage out here on the right, too. Trailer takes a snap, looking. Throws towards the end zone. Pass complete to King, but King wrapped up at the five-yard line, and that'll bring up fourth down for the Leopards. And they're calling for the kick team, so Torres and company come out onto the field. And somewhat of a moral victory there for the McGee Owls. Tell you what, they better find 17. 17 has been coming on the wing on every one of these extra points, and he's almost to get one. They better find him and uh, get a man on him. Looks like they got Davis out on him. Bryant is the holder for the Leopards. He sets up at the 13-yard line. The snap is good. The hold is good. The kick is even better. Even better. 24 to nothing, 9.27 to go here in the first half of play. Leopards lead McGee. You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. Dreaming of your retirement? Let's plan it together. 
We're Malvern National Bank. Enjoy life. We make financial security easy. We're Malvern National Bank. Back at Claude Man Stadium, Leopards lead McGee 24 to nothing after a field goal there by Alfonso Torres, 27 yarder. Guys, I think that was a good call by the coaching staff. Get those points. That's not a true moral victory for the McGee Owls because they have not stopped Malvern from scoring yet. Torres on to kick off for the Leopards. Last two times, or last time rather, kicked it down to the 10 yard line. Last two times. Torres again with a nice strong kick, fielded this time at the 7 yard line. Across the 15, the 20 yard line, and good success there for McGee as they're going to get the ball at the 30 to start this possession. Guys, that was number three. Marcel Bedford it comes up and uh, makes the tackle right at the 30 yard line, so uh, McGee will take over first and 10. 9 21. On the, in the second quarter, 24 nothing. Now, you know, this is the best starting field position that uh, the Owls have had, the McGee Owls had here in the first half, and they're on the 30-yard line, Johnny. Guys, I, I hope that I'm highlighting Devin, Devin Ball again, and maybe he'll come up with a pick. <laughs> Two receivers to the far side for McGee. They bring a man in motion to the near side and overload the near side. Fumbled snap. Now, incomplete. Not sure what they're going to call this one. Incomplete or backwards pass. I think they're going to him back uh, at the 28. Guys, yeah, Evan Ball got in there and, yes, and he was. <laughs> he was causing <laughs> havoc. He <laughs> was a quarterback and then also gets in on the tackle as well. So uh, he, he's a one man wrecking crew out there. He hears his name called and he's ready to play. I noticed one thing too that. Uh, Kevin Bell is just wearing a little bit smaller cast this week or two, guys. That helps him. That's a club. Second down and 12. Gill under center takes a snap. Swing pass. Far side pass is complete at the 29. Tackle made almost immediately. And that poor young man got hammered, what, guys, by four or five leopards? He had 152 <laughs> running down his throat. He said, I got to get out of here. <laughs> I tell you, made him out too. You know, we've watched Kevin play and play hard and play well since he's a sophomore, and uh, there just didn't even let up in him. Mm. I mean, he's playing, I mean, he's just, he's a little bit bigger than, if you can believe that, a little bit bigger and stronger than he was as a, as a 10th grade and 11th grader, but uh, he is really one heck of a football player. Third down 11 for the McGee Owls as Gill steps under center. Leopard show bliss. They're trying to get to the outside. They give it to Green, and Green's going to power his way up to the 35, but he'll be well shy of the first. Yeah, not enough for a game. They're going to have to punt it again because they're on their side of the field. They don't want to give Malvern another easy opportunity to march down and score once again, so they're going to have to punt away. Just a little under eight minutes left here, 7.45 in the first half. Leopards lead this one 24 to nothing. Uh, Getting ready to receive yet another punt from the McGee Owls. Deep man for the Leopards, King and Bryant. Set up fairly deep. Low snap fielded by the punter. Downs at the 46-yard line and takes a McGee roll. And that will be down just inside the Malvern 30-yard line. And the Leopards will have about 70 yards to go for another score. 7-18 to go here in the first half of play. Malvin leading 24 to nothing. Just, uh, I know this is a wonderful game that Malvin is able to be participating in, but the Malvin needs to work on these little things, work on consistency yeah. in their offense. Yeah. I know that <clears throat> McGee's not giving them a battle right now, but things to click right now to enhance their efforts later on in the playoff. Yeah, up the middle. That is Henson, and he trips as he goes to make a cut. He'll be brought down at the 30, so little or no gain on the play for Malvern. Yeah, he actually held in Harlem and uh, backed up a little bit and got knocked down, big old 11th grader, 6'1", 200-pounder, and uh, Henson tripped over. You know, the thing that the Leopards really have to worry about now is, is Johnny, is keep their focus and not let it get sloppy. 
Two receivers to the right and one to the left for the Leopards as Trailer sets up in shotgun. Takes a snap, looking to throw, looking to the right, now throwing. Pass is complete. Complete at the 39-yard line. James King, the recipient of that pass. That'll leave the Leopards about a yard shy of the first. Yeah, the coaches have seen it, Johnny. They're, they're going at number seven. They've got, uh, got one-on-one -on -one with King, and uh, King's going to win that battle all night long with a healthy seven, let alone a gimped up one. Third down, less than a yard, four miles of Coming into the game is Jared Davis. So he'll be lined up at either a slot or a fullback position, most likely. He is set up in the slot on the right side. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. As Trailer takes a snap, give up the middle. And that is going to be a loss for the Leopards. And we'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, Le Leopards missed, a, missed an assignment there in, in the line and, and didn't pick up, looks like, the, the Mike linebacker. And uh, he was in there. The forward progress puts the ball basically back to where it was. And it will be fourth down in less than a yard. The offense staying on the field for the Leopards here with 5.31 to go. Guys, uh, the, the defensive line for Owls have not been the, <clears throat> the nuisance. It's been the outside linebacker play. Trailer on the keeper yeah. gets the first down. Yeah. And it'll be up to the 44-yard line. And Johnny, and it goes back to what you said. We saw that coming because our offensive line is, is just, just it's got a size advantage on this Owl line, don't they? No, they do up front. And like I said, it's the outside linebacker play that's, that's been, it's been the only bright spot for the Owls, and, they, and the only time that they're doing any good is when they're blitzing. First and 10 for Malvin, five, five minutes to go, rather, here in the first half of play. Malvin leading 24 nothing. Trailer working out a shotgun, it's three receivers to his left, one to his right. Takes a snap, gives to Henson. Left side across the 45, you're at midfield and upended there. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Henson sees that on film tomorrow, and he's going to go. He's going to go outside of Trent Bryan on that block out there because uh, he, he had some more running room out there. Nonetheless, he picked up five and a half yards. Nice gain on first down, and uh, he got second and five. Makes it a whole lot different than uh, you know anything like a second and ten or whatnot. Yeah, different. Justin Davis and, and, and Tacoma Green. Of course, they both play offense as well as running back, and they're the one on the tackle. Trailer takes snap, looks to throw, has some pressure. Now going down the right sideline, looking for King, and it's just wow. out of his reach. Great call. And that will bring a third down for the Leopards as the pass goes incomplete. That was a stop and go, Johnny. That had seven on it if, if uh, King could have got to the ball. Yeah, a late arriving safety allowed King to get past <clears throat> the quarterback and uh, get past all of them. We're just a little bit overthrown. King made a great move, really a great move on the on the corner over here. He he bit on that in on that curl in route, and then James was off and gone. Just couldn't quite connect. Cody Buchanan into the game for the Leopards. Going to split the near side, Javis, or Davis rather, in at the slot position. Third down and five. As Trailer sets up in shotgun. Give this to Henson up the middle, and he's in immediately. That'll bring up fourth down for Miles. Nothing doing right there. Number 66 for, uh, that's Cody Free. Uh, comes up there and makes an immediate stop on uh, Henson and then stops him in his track right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's the first time the uh, the sidelines over there for me, McGee Owls got a little excited. And that, that's the first time thing they've had to get excited about. 343 left there. Leopards leading this one 24 to nothing. Buchanan in the kick for the Leopards. Low line drive kick. Fielded at the 23-yard line and tackle oh, made at the 27. Mario <laughs> Jamerson just up to him immediately. <laughs> yeah, he's down there and just really takes his feet out from under him. So the Leopard defense comes back out onto the field. Three minutes, 31 seconds to go here in the first half, and the Leopards leading 24-0. The McGee offense. Has yet to find any rhythm whatsoever here in the first half. That was their very first stop for the ball game, and uh, <clears throat> like Ron said, that was the first excitement they've had across the field yet. Gill brings a man in motion near side, now sits up, overloads the near side. 
The give is to Green. He'll try that left side. And Bell and company make the tackle up at the 31-yard line. A uh, gain of about three or four. And uh, decent yardage on first down by a student body left. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's like we said earlier, this is a, a tough situation. Uh, kind of an uphill battle for these McGee Owls with uh, three minutes left here, tra trailing 24 to nothing, and uh, just not that deep strike ability. They haven't shown it yet, we'll put it that way. Gill up under center, no wide outs for the Owls. They'll give up the middle tackle made there. Good job by Osha Johnson. Wow. Filled Osha. hole and nothing doing, and Watkins come up and finishing them all. Osha was just there, it was like thump. That was a thump. Yeah, yeah, that went all the way up here. Certainly could. Clock continues to roll now, nearing two and a half minutes to go in the first half. The house the face of third down and five. Mike, Mike I think that uh, Mauer gets a stop. They may want to stop the clock. Again, no receivers for the Owls. As Gill steps under center. Gill is oh, wow. to the running back and he Curry and he is dropped for a loss. Devin Ball was right there, Johnny. Wow, Devin Ball, wonderful. Isolated player of the game here. Steps up in the hole and just levels him. Inside two minutes to go now. Uh, we, yeah, we expect the, uh, the Owls to run as much time off this clock as they can. Yeah, they're and, uh, just going to let it roll. And I, yeah. The Leopards should get the ball with about a minute and a half to go. They'll have to get the playoff with a minute and a half. The Leopards take a timeout. They'll stop the clock with a minute 43 to go here in the first half. Leopards lead this one 24 to nothing. We'll be back with more Malvin Leopard football. Hi, I'm Josh. I love Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season for Iron Leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings, an 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer a Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Back at Claude Mann Stadium, where the... McGee Owls will face a fourth down and five. They're at their own 33-yard line. We're talking uh, during the break that the, uh, McGee really seems to be uh, struggling, and, and the longer the road the game goes, the more we see uh, Kevin Murdoch, excuse me, number seven Grant Gill uh, hobbling. hobbling out here, and, and he was a big, you know, I think he's a big part of this offense that. Uh, they don't have. Mark Cummings, the punter for the Owls, sets up inside his own 20-yard line. Good snap. He gets the punt away. Nice, long spiral kick. Fair catch call for by Trent Bryant at the 30-yard line. Nice job by Bryant. Get under the ball and stop it there at uh, about the 33, 32-yard line that uh, uh, saves some yardage for the Leopards. Ball spotted. At the, th at the 31. <laughs> well, good. Okay. Now back. <laughs> they're taking it to the other 31. Okay. Minute 36 to go here in the first half. Leopards lead 24 nothing. As Trailer sets up in shotgun. Two receivers to either side. Barnes and Llewellyn split to the far side. King and Bryant split to the near side. Trailer takes a snap, looking to throw. Swing pass is complete to Jamerson. He's at the 30. 35 will be dropped after a gain of about six, maybe seven. And the clock will continue to roll as the Leopards will hustle back to the line of scrimmage. Leopards get a chance here, Johnny, to work on that two-minute offense. And what we saw last week at, at Dumas, it's deadly. Trailer again, working out a shotgun. Same formation for the Leopards. Trailer looking to throw near side. Hit as he lets it go, but gets it to Brian. Brian gets out of bounds at the 46-yard line. That'll stop the clock with a minute five. They're going to spot it at the 46-yard line. Trailer's going to hit James King down the middle. I'm just going to make that call because it's, it's there all night. Again, the Leopards leading 24 to nothing, looking to add to that lead as they go into the locker room. Two receivers again to either side. Jamerson in the backfield along with 
Trailer. Trailer takes, now gives to Jamerson. Near side, cuts towards the sideline. He's at midfield, and he'll be dropped inbounds just as he crosses into Owl territory. Leverage again, hustle back to the line of scrimmage. 52 seconds now to go in the first half. This is really good, really good work for the Leopards on this hurry-up offense with 45 seconds to go. Referees put the ball in play, and Trailer gets it working out of shotgun. Throws, far side, passes, picked off by the Owls. we got a flag down back in Leopard territory. Jamison, the only one with a shot at the tackle, and he comes up with very little. He didn't need that. I'm probably going to be a hold here on the Leopards. He, tell you what, that corner set on that route, and he read it all the way, and I'm telling you, he jumped that route and did an outstanding job. And all of a sudden, roughing the passer, Roughing the passer. Oh my goodness. They threw the, they threw the, threw the flag early. This one's coming back. Uh, in a chorus of booze from the far side of the yeah. field. And, uh, but the, the, the flag was thrown before the ball ever, before, before the ball was ever intercepted. So, uh, <clears throat> and uh, Coach Fogelman's over here on the sideline. I think he's telling David, you know, you just don't throw that one out there in the flat like that. Uh, with that corner setting on it. 29 seconds to go in the half, and it is a roughing the passer penalty, and that will get the Leopards penalty yards, and that will move the ball to just inside the 35-yard line of McGee. Leopards very fortunate there. Yeah. The Owls could have gone into the locker room with a significant amount yeah. of, of momentum. And the boos are raining down from the other side. Two receivers on either side for the Leopards. Trailer again has Jamison set up to his right. Trailer takes the snap, looking to throw, swing pass complete to Jamison at the 35, the 30, and he'll run out of bounds as he crosses the 30. <laughs> Another one of those we can get old Torres to limit that leg up, guys. That's not a bad idea. Get another 10 yards, we will be in his range for sure. The Leopards do have one more timeout, and... Uh, Stops the clock with 23 and a half seconds to go here in the first half. Again, two receivers to either side. Now, Trader looks to be working from under center. Jamerson alone in the backfield. Quick drop, throw, far side. Ugh. Pass incomplete, incomplete, intended for Patrick Lowell and goes through his hands. And that'll stop the clock with 20 seconds. I believe on that one, Patrick was probably getting ready to run with that ball before it got to him. And, and he had a, little bit of, had a little bit of room out there. Third down and five for Malvin. So if they don't get the first down here, be looking at a possible field goal attempt or go for it on the fourth and long. Trailer working out a shotgun. Gives to Jamerson. Up the middle. Jamerson flag thrown as Jamerson's going to break this one open down to the 15 yard line, and that's probably going to come back against the Leopards. Yeah, yeah. right. So it's, uh, it's in the spot of the hole. Right in the middle of the field and uh, going to bring it back. It is holding against Malvin, and that will go from the spot of the foul, which looks to be at the 27. Move the ball back to the 37-yard line, and it will again be third down. 12 minutes and, excuse 12 seconds, 12.9 uh, seconds. Leopards lead this from 24 to nothing, uh, headed into halftime. They'd like to add to that if, if possible. They just dodged a bullet, bullet while ago on a big interception by... We're going to have to call a timeout. Leopards have to take their final timeout. They'll have time, really, for just one play. Coach hey. Fogelman is Coach doing some coaching out there in, in the huddle, and... Uh, it's one of these things, you know, when you're up 24 to nothing, Johnny, you got to keep your intensity up. And we're in the playoffs. I mean, this team over here across from us, they, they want it just as bad as we do. And uh, you let any letdown, <clears throat> if they had scored, they would have had the ball back in the second half. It could be 14 to 24 and an opportunity to, to be only down 10 
in early on in the third quarter. And that's a real easy ball game to come back from as 10, not 24 at halftime. Well, John Fogan was doing an excellent job of coaching out there. He's, you know, he's in that huddle by himself, and he's uh, eyeball to eyeball with these kids. And, and uh, the respect and admiration and the way they work for him, you know they're paying attention to him. It will be third down and 13 for the Lampards. Because he can get he can get his game face on, can he, guys? Oh, quickly. <laughs> Two receivers to either side for the Leopards. Trailer working out of shotgun. Gets some pressure up the middle. Throws underneath. Pass intended for Bryston Barnes. And that will stop the clock with just over two seconds to go here in the first half and the Leopards, Johnny, have one more shot. Yeah, they're trying to get that that 10 yards back so we have a chance to kick it. Now uh, Malvern's going to have to go all the way to the end zone with it. And yeah, yeah, there's no chance for a kick now. Yeah, I think they're going to send King and Bryant and probably, you know, one out there, we talked about Briston Barnes is out there. He's lulling them to sleep. He, it, it could be going to him. Trailer drops straight back. Has time, throws. Far sideline. And looking for King, and King is out of bounds. Pass was really uncashable anyway. But the clock will expire here in the first half, and the Lepers will go to the locker room with a 24 to nothing lead. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Banking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Leopards are fixing to kick this one off. And uh, like I say, if you're just tuning in, you missed an exciting first half. And uh, Leopards lead this one 24 to nothing. Uh, at, uh, and we'll just see... Uh, Check the intensity of this, this, like you said, this, this defense when we come back. Leopards are 12 minutes away from moving to, moving to going to Boonville next week. How about 24? 24 minutes? Would be, that'd, be, that'd, be, that'd make the game over, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Torres gets the kick away, bounds at the 25, takes a high hop, fields it at the 15. Across the 25, the 30, and a good return by the Rice Owls. I believe that's Green, their tailback on the return. Yeah, and nice run by Isaiah, Isaiah Holmes. Isaiah Holmes, and uh, <clears throat> you know the thing about it is, you, you've got to know McGee's in the playoff, and you got to know the McGee coaching staff has made some adjustments. Uh, the Leopards have made some adjustments, and, and we'll see how how it goes on this first series here. First and ten for McGee. They'll start off with the 37-yard line here in the third quarter. Again, Gill. Up under center, tight formation, one man split to the near side. The give is to Green, cuts up field, breaks a couple of tackles, and he'll get up near the 45 or across the 45-yard line. He'll be within about a yard of a first down. Yeah, Green slipped a tackle on that one, Johnny, going around that side. Yeah, he, bust, he got through an arm tackle of uh, Kevin Bell. It's, a, it's very unusual, but uh, got through him and also Mitchell Whitman. And uh, got up near the first down. Second down and a yard for the McGee Owls. The Leopards defense just needed to reestablish the line of scrimmage and take it back over. They come back to the line of scrimmage, full backfield. To give this time to Curry. Curry busts the tackle, going down the far sideline, and King's going to run him out of bounds, but not before he gets inside the Malvern 30-yard line. Well, you can't help but think, Johnny, that the McGee coaches made some adjustments on their blocking on, on the way the Leopards were stopping them in that first half, and, and it's, uh, you know, and our coaches here, I'm, I'm sure, are picking up and, and uh, on, on the block, blocking schemes that the Owls are using against them. Yeah, they're allowing the, they're pinching on the outside and, and keeping our linebackers getting outside with the running back. Again, tight formation. One man split to the left as Gill steps under center. Oh, he got a move. Yeah. And, and the give was going to be to Curry, but this one will go backwards. <clears throat> this is where they they really sh when you're a running team you shoot yourself in the foot so many times. And a false start. You ought to be watching the line of scrimmage to see that ball being hiked before you move. And unfortunately, the receiver out to the left-hand side 
he moved first, and you're going to get marked each time. Well, another, thing, another thing too, Johnny, when you're in that interior line, I believe it looked like a tackle moved also. When you're really fighting the struggle, you're going to you try to get every advantage you can on that offense, on that defensive line, and sometimes an offensive man will get get a little get a little anxious, especially when you're outsized on top of everything else. Yeah. First down, 15 for the Isles. Gill takes a snap, drops back, has some pressure up the middle. Now looking to throw near the end zone. It is incomplete. Trent Bryant on the coverage. Wow, that's that's what you run into with this offense, Johnny. He threw into double coverage. That, that quite honestly, that pass didn't have a chance. No, no. I mean, even Trent Bryant, he's one-on-one -on -one coverage <clears throat> with him out at the corner. And then he's the only receiver split out. Yeah, and then and one, and he could, <coughs> Bryant's run a uh, Bryant's run hand to hand with him, and then James King comes in from his safety, and it's uh, like I say, it's a toss into double coverage. The second down and 15 for the Owls. Ball at the Malvin 34-yard line. If you're just joining us, we're just underway here in the third quarter. Malvin leads 24 to nothing. Gill up under center, takes a snap. This time he gives two is running back Green, and Green is going to be stopped after a short game, a couple of yards at the most. Yeah, he didn't get nowhere. Maybe a yard. No, he got just a little over the line of scrimmage. Brings up a long third down and <clears throat> near 15 yards. Osha Johnson was there really for a big stop. Guys, uh, we talked about it in the first half a couple of times, a couple of times rather, with the Leopards. This is likely going to be four down territory for the Owls, considering... Uh, the fact that they do not have a high-powered offense, and they're going to have to take advantage of every opportunity they get. Grady Allison's got some kind of equipment problem with his shoe, and, and uh, they got that 14, 14 size <laughs> shoe. Put it back on, taste a little bit. Those laces have got to go through about 37 holes yeah, on that big old shoe. I know a lot of them in that Allison family, they've got some big feet. Got I'm gonna tell you something from you, young man's young man lady size. I tell you what, you've got to have a good foundation. Third down and 14 for the Owls. They come back to the line of scrimmage. One man split to the near side. The ball is set up on the far hash mark, and now we've got a timeout on the field. McGee calls timeout. We'll be back. The leopards, the leopards lead this one 24 to nothing. We'll be back after these messages. Enjoy your life. We make financial security easy. We're Malvern National Bank. We've got the strength to help you build a solid financial future. We're Malvern National Bank. Back at Claude Mann Stadium, Lepers leading this one 24 to nothing, 10.35 to go in the third quarter of play. And the Owls are facing a third down and 14 from the Malvern 33-yard line. Yeah, we had an official timeout for uh, equipment repair, and then I guess the McGee coaches saw something that saw something they didn't like, and they turned around and turned to call a timeout right back on top of it. But uh, we're about ready to go. The Leopards lead this one 24 to nothing. Uh, 10 seconds, 35 seconds left in the 10 minutes in the third quarter. Neil yeah, steps under center. Three receivers now for the Owls. Thanks to the screen pass, now looking down the far sideline. Bryant on coverage, and that pass had no chance. Wow. Trent Bryant was all over the intended yeah. receiver. He was. He had him. I mean, Johnny, you talk about getting in, inside his shirt. He was inside his shirt. Yeah, he had great position, and he was always between the quarterback <coughs> and the receiver, and he was on him like a blanket. Brings up a long fourth down. But uh, you know that the McGee Owls have to, to take chances, and this is going to be one of them right here. Yeah, this might be a chance for a draw, set up for a draw or something like that and then try to get uh, the big running back uh, some running room. Two receivers split to the far side, one to the near side for the Owls. Gill steps under center. 
Takes a snap, straight back, now has some pressure. Escapes from one man, he's going to be hit and dropped. The fumble on the play, picked up, well, almost picked up, kicked out of bounds by the letters. Fourth down. That's fourth down, our ball. I tell you what, we talked about Cortez Smith earlier, Johnny. He was all over that ball, and he wanted to pick it up and go with it, didn't he? Well, it all started when Osha Johnson yeah. was in pursuit of the quarterback, and then Gray Austin got in on it. <laughs> and then, well, you know, they squirt the ball out, and the ball starts bounding the other way, and Smith tried to pick it up, and then he kicked it. Kicked it in our advantage another four yards, and I, I'm, I was afraid that uh, they are going to put it back to where the spot he kicked it, but, but now that they, they will spot it going out of bounds. Ball is spotted at the mouth, and looks like it's going to be the 49-yard yeah. line. Right? Yeah, 49. one thing we did talk about, guys, uh, the defense did come out after a couple of long plays and established themselves and took back over that series anyway. Trailer working out of shotgun. It's both backs in the backfield with him. Give to Jamerson. Good block there. Jamerson down the right sideline at the 35, the 30. Oh, oh, right out at the 20. They're going to get the Leopards. And it looks like for some type of hold. Yeah, unfortunately, Keene's going to get tagged again for the hold. Still be enough for a first down. Yeah, the sad thing about it was, guys, that, that, that was probably behind the play a little bit. And uh, that's just a kid wanting to play, make a play. He's got, you know, the coaches go out there and pat him on the head and say, hey, keep your head up, keep your head up, don't worry about it, you know. Good job of Jamerson, dude, just finding the seam, and it just blows by everybody. And, and when you don't let him go immediately, and, and Jamerson flies by, it, it may appear yeah. that he had a cold on him. But unfortunately, it didn't look like it from our angle, but... Uh, that's not the way that the, uh, the referee saw it. Yeah, it all spotted at the 38. It's first and 10 for the Leopards. Good job blocking up front on that play. Bryant now going to the far side. Again, both Jamerson and Henson in the backfield along with Trailer. This time, fake the give to Jamerson. Trailer letting it go down the far sideline, and that one's going to have no chance as King was triple covered down the far sideline. Yeah, I believe the coaches at Old McGee figured out even after the film and everything that you're going to have to, you're going to, have to know where number four is and what he's doing all the time. You know, you, you think that uh, <clears throat> eventually that Malvin will keep running everybody off with King and then throw it underneath, underneath him, yeah, uh, to, to Brian or uh, Barnes. You know, of course, Patrick Llewellyn's also in this mix. This time, give Jamerson right side, slips the tackle, hit at the 35, and is going to be drugged down at the 34-yard line. So a pickup of four on the play, it'll be third and six. Leopards run that same play they got uh, Jamerson loose on a while ago, and uh, that time looked like the, the outside linebacker really came across and, and uh, saved, saved a long gainer, Johnny. Ball has to get near the 28-yard line for a first and a uh, long six yards for Malvern to get the first down. This might be that flat, flat float pass out there to Lou Ellen again. Two receivers on either side now for a trailer and the Leopards. Trailer tries to draw the owls off sides. Is unsuccessful. Now takes a snap. Looking to throw. Pass complete. Trent Bryant inside the 30. Down two. Looks like the 27, maybe the very close. I can't see from 28. the hour and players. Coach Freer says it's a first down, but we don't know yet. He's making the signal. Well, they're going to measure it. So they're going to bring the chains on. 8.55 to go here in the third quarter. Malvin leading 24 to nothing. Did a good job then of knowing where the uh, where the boundary was and where the, the first down was. Uh, the Leopards didn't get this one. They're, they're, they're sh fourth and really, really, really short. Inside the 30-yard line, Mike, Johnny, you figure they got to go for it. Oh yeah, this is this is in between right now uh, <clears throat> to our kicker leg and, and and the opportunity to go for it. If you miss, you're shy by a foot, and if you punt it, you're only going to get about eight yards net if you kick it out of the end zone. So Myron might as well go for it. You know, last time in this situation. We saw uh, David Trailer just step up there and take a look at each one side or the other and, and, and snuck it over for the uh, when we converted the other fourth down. There's Kevin Bell in the huddle for the Leopards. Grady Allison's in there. Got some, got some beef in there. 
Of course, Quentin Welch is in there and uh, a lot of size up there. Fourth down and about a foot for the Leopards. They hustle the line of scrimmage. They need an eye formation for the Leopards. Two men split to the left. And the give will be to Henson. Henson across the 20 and inside the 15 yard line. They're going to get yeah, an hour for an unsportsmanlike penalty. Yeah. That will move the ball down to what, the seven and a half yards? Yeah, yeah, about seven and a half. Right. You cannot, after you get him out of bounds, the whistle's blown, you can't wrestle him to the ground and throw him, and uh, that's exactly what one of the owls did on the defenders. You're getting frustrated, yeah. you know, trying to hold him on fourth down and uh, blows past him, and hence in uh, speed just gets to the corner. As I was saying, whoa, 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 that's when he was, he was twirling him around, throwing him down, and... Uh, Give the Leopards an opportunity here to put it, put seven more up, and uh, it'll be first and goal for the Leopards. Ball at the seven-yard line. Jared Davis stays in at fullback. Two men split to the left. And trailer under center. The Leopards are in an eye formation. Give again to Henson. Right side. Hit at the line of scrimmage. Stays on his feet. Battling towards the end zone. He is... Out of bounds at about three inches from the goal line. Side judge couldn't make up his mind, could he, Johnny? No, he got spun around. The ball's got to break the plane of, <clears throat> plane of the, the goal line. Just quite not get there. Went in backwards, but uh, runs over the pylon, spins out of bounds. But uh, I have to take the what's the sideline judge call, my boy. But very close. Nose of the football just outside the goal line. Again, an eye formation for the Leopards. Henson in at tailback. And he'll get the call. He's got the touchdown, and the Leopards are ahead now, 30 to nothing. Big, big, big drive for the yeah. Bowler Leopards. First time with the ball in the, in the third quarter and uh, drive it right down there after the Owls come out and make a couple of first down long runs. And then now Malvern answers immediately and uh, comes up with another score. Puts big numbers up on the board in the third quarter here. Torres on to kick the extra point and very nearly blocked, but is not and the kick is good. Leopards lead 31 to nothing, 839 to go here in the third quarter of play. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Banking in the right direction. Are you looking for a bank where you're greeted with a smile, a sincere hello, and a banker who calls you by name and lets you know that they are sincerely glad to see you? Then come by Southern State Bank. We're here to serve you and offer the friendliest and best service available in Malvern and Hot Spring County. Visit Southern State Bank. We're here for you. Banking in the right direction. Southern State Bank. Back at Claude Man Stadium. Leopards leading 31 to nothing. 8.39 to go in the third quarter. Guys, uh, after what looked like a promising drive for McGee, Malvern is able to stop them, and the Leopard offense finds finds a spark once again and marches down the field for the touchdown. Yeah, pretty pretty convincingly. They did get uh, get slowed down there and did have to go on for fourth and fourth and less than about a foot or something like that, but uh, uh, really a, ni a nice performance by the offense. Torres kicks off to the Owls, angled towards the far sideline, fielded at the 11, across the 20, at the 25, 30-yard line, and tackle made as the return man gets up just over the 35, up to the 36. Yeah, yeah. Number six, Nick Ringo. Ringo's. Ringo. No, okay, is it Ringo? Yeah, it should be. They got an S on the last. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, anyway, 10th grader, 5'8", 150-pounder, was down there right in, right in the mix of that and made the stop on the... Uh, Ringo's, I'm sorry, you're right. Yeah, right. Ringo's. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the third quarter as... And we always look to open things up. And we apologize to the Ringo's families if we butchered their name. Pressure on Gill, and he is hitting the backfield. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. It's gonna be, yeah, he's in the deal. Big old Grady Allison had, had him and just really wrapped him up and, and uh, 
Not only that, Allison, Osha Johnson, and the whole crew there were with that Johnny. He, he had him, he, he had him down. He intentionally grounding it, and uh, cannot do that. I, I think that's the reason why his ankle was hurt. Cannot escape. He has no escapability. I, and I think he's used to getting away. I think uh, I think when he's healthy, you know, his his brain saying I can get do this and run through it or get away, but uh, uh, his his ankle and leg just won't let it won't let it happen. Okay, they all oh, setting penalties. Got face mask against Malvern and all. An illegal grounding by the quarterback, and it becomes offsetting penalties. Well, Owls will take over again on first and ten. The Leopards lead this one 31 to nothing, 8.24 left in the third quarter. Two minutes split to the right, two minutes split to the left now for Gill. He set up in shotgun, there's one back to his left. Gill, under pressure immediately, gets the pass away. He's caught in Malvern territory. And gone. James King gets the ball away. He goes in the end zone. That's a recovery play by James King. <laughs> we got a rough in the pass. It's all coming back. We got a rough in the passer back here on us. Unless he picked it up. And I guess the referee picked it up. Oh, my goodness. It looked like the receiver, I believe, was Kendall Lambert. Before the Isles was gone, James King tracks him down, knocks yeah. the ball away. We call, yeah, the, the referees call, and they, we, they got, we got a ref and the passer back over, uh, back over here, and uh, but there's no flag down. You can't pick it up. I don't, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Yeah, I, well, now they really got to get the ball way back down on the uh, this end of the field. And they are going to call roughing the passer. And that is going to, going to be marked off from the line of scrimmage. <clears throat> they may have to get an oxygen mask out for this referee. Osha Johnson got back there in the face of the quarterback. It didn't see that he roughed him, but he, he was back there <clears throat> as the play was being delivered and uh, yes. <laughs> the long pass and, and breaking it up and recovering it in the end zone. I tell you what, though, and, and it's something, well, I tell you, well, that we got to look at. The, the coaches to have a look at. They're splitting it out, and they've decided they're going to throw the football in the second half. Guys, try to catch up. Again, two receivers to either side. Gill set up in shotgun. Pressure immediately. Throws over the middle. Passes incomplete. Wow. They, and there's there's no offensive ten. line that can. Yeah. On the, McGee can hold back Malvern. <clears throat> Osha Johnson is just being a wrecking ball, getting back there in the face of the quarterback. And, of course, Kevin Ball was back there as well, putting pressure on the quarterback, and the quarterback's got to get rid of it. Well, Johnny, what, what you're running into here, you've got, a, you've got a running team used to run blocking, and they don't spend a whole lot of time on pass blocking, and there's a big difference. Hence, our, our offensive line, our defensive linemen should have some advantages. Second down and 10 for the Owls. This time they go back to the run game, and Curry... Gets the handoff, gets over the 45, right at the 45-yard line. Pick up of a couple on the play to bring up third down and eight. Bear in mind, Curry is a big defensive lineman that plays out defensive end, and he's taking the ball and running with it. That's almost like giving it to Kevin Bell and say, here, take off. Take off go somewhere, yeah. Third down and eight for the Owls. Curry, the lone man in the backfield. Again, two wide outs to either side. Gill is under center. Looking to throw, near side, pass is complete, and James King gets an initial hit, but Green is able to get the ball up to the 42-yard line of the Leopards. Pick up of about three on the play. Well, King had him in the backfield, and he got away from him. It's a running back <clears throat> on the D-back, and uh, the strength of the running back won on that, on that play, but still brings up a fourth down and a long four. As Johnny said, fourth down and four, and the Owls are going to go for it here, down 31 to nothing with seven minutes to go in the third. 
Come back to the line of scrimmage. Wow. They had a bit, one of the big guards went off limping, and they were running another guy in there. So send a man in motion to the far side. That's Green. Now he's uh, looking to throw it. Uh, King, King back there, and King breaks it up. Well, not that. Actually, number six turned into a D-back because King was going to inter intercept it, don't you think, Johnny? Yeah. But number six did a great job, Kimball Lambert, turning, in, turning it into a defensive player. Yeah, he had the, King had the opportunity to come down with it, and that receiver had to play defense. And uh, Malvern turns it over on downs. Great job by the defense. Well, Johnny, we're seeing now what we saw last week. We, we're seeing a running team. The Leopards have stuffed them. We've seen a running team trying to do something that they're not comfortable doing. That's throwing the ball and talking to Fogelman, Coach Fogelman. This is what he wanted. Trips wide, split left for the Leopards. As Trailer steps under center, first and 10 for Malvern at their own 42-yard line. Hit immediately. Wow. There's four guys in the backfield and and nobody blocked. And unfortunately, the assignment broke down on the offensive line. Focus needs to be regained by the Leopards here on the offense. Put this game away. Well, we've got some young men in there on that offensive line that uh, were resting some of our, of our big guns and uh, giving some of these youngers, young, youngsters some, you know, some uh, battle under under fire, I guess. Trailer takes a snap, looking to throw a swing pass. Complete to Jamerson at the 35 at the 40-yard line, and he'll be brought down as he crosses the 45 up to the 46-yard line. And that will bring up third down for the Leopards in about six. Yeah, the ball has to get over midfield near the 48-yard uh, line for a first down. So, uh, yes, Mike, it'll be a long six yards. Yeah, looking here, you, you know, you see Eric Watson, uh, Grady Allison, uh, Blake Tossin, a lot of the big linemen here setting, getting the breath, getting a breather. Trailer takes a snap, looking to throw, has some pressure, gets the uh, ball away uh, and under throws his intended receiver, yeah. intended for Bryston Barnes. And it will be fourth down for Mallard and the punting team will take the field. Yeah, it looked like Trailer just short-armed that one just a little bit. 5.27 to go here in the third quarter. Malvin leading 31 to nothing. Clint Buchanan, the punter for Malvin, comes on the field. He'll set up back at the 32-yard line of Malvin. One deep man for the Owls. They try to put the pressure oh, on, but oh, Buchanan wow. gets a great punt away, fielded at the 15-yard line. And good return there by the Owls as they get it up to the 25-yard line, and they'll take over there first and 10. Leopards lead this one, 5:15 left in the third quarter, 31 to nothing, and uh, just had to punt the ball, and uh, we'll, we'll see what see what the defense can do now. Guys, you know, one of the, the keys to victory that Coach Fogelman mentioned was uh, don't make mistakes, and so far in this ball game, Malvern has not made a mistake uh, turning the ball over. Of course, mental mistakes have kind of Stopped the offense and, and hindered the defense a little bit, but still, Malvern's played a solid ball game tonight. Gill again working out of shotgun. Play stops before action resumes, and that'll move the Owls back five yards once again. It's got to be an illegal motion on the offense, and then <clears throat> the only way that would call a dead ball penalty if defense got in the uh, neutral zone, which was about the length of the football, but uh, that's not the case. Back McGee up five yards near the 20. Once again, you just put a, a running team, you know, first and 15, Johnny. And, you know, we sound, sound like a broken record, but it just really makes it tough on those guys. So, Gil will work out a shotgun again with two receivers to either side. Curry in the backfield to his left. Gill with pressure. Rolls to his left. Throws pass is complete. Good catch there by number 23. And that is Chase Garner. You just have to expect, though, Johnny, with the pressure that the Le Leopards are getting on Gill, that uh, something's going to happen. He they're going to turn the ball over. Okay. Yeah, and Allison and Osha Johnson are just whipping the boys up front and getting in the face of the quarterback. And the only way that Gill can get out of there is scramble. Yeah, they'll start sending Devin Ball and, 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 and Kevin Bell here in a minute, and, and it'll corner blitz, and the pass is thrown. They had a man open. Down the right side of the field, pass goes incomplete. It was intended for Braxton 
Baird, and it will be third down and a yard for the Owls. Blitz from the outside. Marcel Bedford put the pressure on the court, but had to get rid of it quickly. That's the reason of the overthrown pass. But again, you can just see the desperation in every throw that the, that the, uh, the Owls have in, in trying to make a big play. They're going to go back to a slightly yeah. more tight formation. Yeah, have three receive, four receivers out. Number one's going to get it. Take the give now on the keeper is ball quarterback out. Greg Gill. And Devin Ball, he knocks it out, but it goes out of bounds right around the 42-yard line. Enough of the first down, but uh, still the quarterback just cannot hang on to that football. I'll say this for, for Gill. This guy's a gamer. He's a gamer. He's tough. He, the kid's really tough. He, he's hanging in there and... Uh, and he's obviously, you know, he's he's he's. he's this suffering. isn't an injury he suffered in the game. I mean, he came out of the gate yeah. with a limp, and it's just got a little bit worse. It hasn't stopped him, but it's got a little bit worse. He's working out of shotgun now, got straight back again. Bedford oh, on the blitz, oh, and he'll wow. get the sack back inside the 30-yard line. Did wow. not see him coming, Did coming from the back coming. side. Wow, and Marcel Bedford. <laughs> Just finally gets him down, and a uh, big play by the Myron Leopard. Yeah, yeah. Cannot hold the ball that long. No, and, and we had they had coverage uh, on the, on the other side. Terrence Jackson's doing a great job over there, you know, along with Kevin Murdoch, and he didn't have any place. He's waiting for a man to get open, and it's too late. Gill up under center now, takes a snap swing pass. Near side, complete to Green. Green trying to get to the sideline. He'll break a tackle and get up over the 40, up to the 42-yard line. And that will bring up third down. Excuse me, the ball at the 38-yard, excuse me, yeah, 42. Yeah. And that will get the Owls within about nine yards of the first. Green shows really good speed out there on that one. That one-on-one -on -one made that first man miss him and... Uh, uh, Consequently, picked up some, some good yardage. Ball's got to get near midfield for the first down, a long seven yards for the first. Again, two receivers to either side for Gill. He has Curry in the backfield, drops straight back, has some pressure, throws underneath, passes incomplete. Intended for number six, Kendall Lambert, and that'll bring up fourth down again for the Owls. Uh, once again, the quarterback's backing up, and Allison's in his face. <laughs> and, and when you throw it off your back foot, you're going to throw it low or high one, and unfortunately, it's landing in the no man's land. The aforementioned pressure that Mike was talking about applied by number 74, Grady Allison. They just can't seem to hold e any of them at this point in time. Gill up under center now. Fourth and seven, drops straight back, has some pressure again. Straight pass, picked off! Picked off, oh my goodness, Eric Watkins with his second interception of the year. <laughs> Eric says I want to be a tight end. <laughs> just caught it, just jumped up in the middle of the passing lane. They're trying to throw an under, under, underneath screen to the big fullback, number one, Curry. <laughs> And uh, Watkins just stepped right in front of the pass and uh, rambles for another five yards. Quarterback has to bring him down, but brings him down at the 30. First and 10, Malvern Leopards. I said that was his second. That may be his third yeah. pick this year. Yeah. You don't see D, D linemen get a lot of picks. Yeah, not that many. And Give underneath to Jameson. He gets across the 30, splits a couple of men inside the 25, down to the 24-yard line, pick up of six on the play. Leopards lead this from 31 to nothing. Two minutes and 50 seconds left here in the third quarter. Looking for more, Johnny. Yeah, this is one of the crucial scores here. You get over 35 points, this game will be ran out in a heartbeat. Henson comes off the field, and Jamerson comes on for the Leopards. Blocking the game as well. Yeah, Terrence wants a chance. He wants, he wants the ball. He wants to run. Give is to block up the middle, looking for a room. He gets inside the 20 and dropped at the 18-yard line. Trent Block, youngster for the Leopards. <laughs> I called him Terrence, but it's Trent, and I'm, 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 I apologize to the Block fan. Nice looking kid, good looking athlete, good 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 tenth grader. He uh, got a lot of Leopard football in front of him. Hey, you hadn't really made it in Leopard football until <laughs> we've called you by the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> we've made a lot of them then, haven't we? Right. Everyone on the daggum chart. Trailer give underneath this time. It is Henson. Henson breaks a tackle and is going to be dropped 
at about the 13-yard line. Pick up a five on the play. It'll be second down and five. Wonderful run by Henson, busting through the initial line of scrimmage and then uh, bouncing it outside, get to the second level, which happens to be the quarterback uh, from the offensive side, and he had to come up for run support. And uh, once again, he hobbles back to his position after a five-yard gain. Barnes and Bryant go split to the far side. James King to the right. Two men in the backfield along with Trailer. To give this to Henson up the middle. And Henson will barrel his way down to the 12-yard line. Pick up a couple on the play. It'll be third down. Big third down in five and a half, six yards on this one. Leopards need to get a first down. Keep the clock running with uh, about a minute and a half left here in the third quarter. Jamerson comes on for the Leopards. And Block comes off. The youngster gets it, getting some valuable experience. You get 23 down there limiting his leg up too, guys. That would be the all-pro kicker. Give this to Jamerson. Right side. Can't find any running. He breaks a tackle and spins his way down to the 10. He's going to be about two, maybe three yards shy of the first. Could have been much worse there as he was hitting the backfield. Guys, I, I think that Fogelman's probably going to go for it, trying to get... <clears throat> that, that crucial four more points. Yeah. And try to get this speedy clock going for him. It is fourth down and three for Malvin as they come back to the line of scrimmage. Henson and Jamison in the backfield along with Trailer. Three wideouts for the Leopards. Faith to give. Throw towards the end zone. Touchdown! Dave oh, King! What a call. King on the slant route. And Trailer never hesitated. He nailed him. Is right in number four bread basket and touchdown quickly. <clears throat> That's the all crucial touchdown that uh, puts the nails in the coffin, in my opinion. And we're going to Boomer. Uh, I think that when that Colin Reagan get the clock going, it's maybe it stops on the extra point. Well, no knuckleball kick goes through the uprights for the extra point, and the Leopards lead now. 38 to nothing. 34 seconds to go here in the third quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. We can help you get that dream home, no matter how big or small, with a competitive rate mortgage from Malvern National Bank. We've got the stamina to get you to your financial goals. We're Malvern National Bank. Back at Claude Mann Stadium, Leopards leading this one, 38 to nothing. 34 seconds to go here in the third quarter, and we've hit mercy rule territory. Unusual territory for us three, for sure. <laughs> but uh, I tell you what, Malvern's had a great game plan offensively and defensively tonight. And, and hats off to the coaching staff getting these young men ready. Starting almost the fourth quarter, Malvern bringing it up 38 to nothing. Toya is set to kick off for Malvern. Lambert, deep four. Bows a kick bounds at the uh -oh, uh -oh. top of 13 and gets away from the Owls, but now they're with running room down the sideline. I think the Leopards could let up on that one, thinking he was going yeah. to do something else, and he took I'm not off so like called a cat. I'm not, well, I thought the kid might have went out of bounds and then came back in and <laughs> got the ball. Well, I, think, was, I don't think so. He was down there on the outside, and, and uh, I think a Holmes can move. Yeah, he has got, he has got some gears. First and 10 for the Owls. They'll get the ball at their 32-yard line. And as before we've spoken, the uh, mercy clock is running now. Let's see if the Owls get off the play here before the end of the third quarter. Gill up under center, full backfield. Give is to the big Green. Back. Green barreling his way for a first down as he gets up to, excuse me, that's Curry. Curry, yeah. As he gets up to the 47, but that will end the fourth quarter. Excuse me, the third quarter. Levers lead 38 to nothing. 
And we'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter in just a moment. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Hi, I'm Josh. Get up, Wade. Hey, I'm Tommy Green, pastor of Third Baptist Church here in Malvern. We're looking forward to a great season for my Leopards. We also want to take this chance and invite you to church. Starting September 27th, we're going to have two worship services on Sunday mornings, an 8.30 traditional service and a 10.55 contemporary service. Also on Sunday nights at 5.25, we offer a Awanas free of charge. And on Wednesday nights at 6, we have a family worship service. We hope to see you soon. Back at Quad Man Stadium as we get set to get the fourth quarter underway. Leopards lead this one 38 to nothing. The Owls have the football at the 47-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 for McGee. Guys, a host of new Leopards out on the football field that <clears throat> haven't played much tonight. And that's number four, Conte Rock. Of course, he's, he's our special team specialist. He's in there. Marcel Bedford's in there still. Cody Buchanan in on the secondary. Yeah. And, uh, and a few other le Leopards. Of course, the D-line is pretty much intact. Allison, Watkins, Mitchell, uh, Osha Johnson. Got Brinston Bar Barnes warming up down here on the sidelines. Give up the middle. Good stop there by the Leopards on first down. Gain of about a yard on the play. Like it may have been a little extra quick in activity, but it settles down quickly. Devin Ball, our isolated player of the game, played a heck of a ball game tonight. And then any, <clears throat> this, this defense, the teeth of this defense, has to uh, revolve around the linebacker play. And Devin Ball has been doing one heck of a, a job on all the run support and getting in on these tackles each and every ball game. My hat's off to that young man. Second down and nine for McGee as Gill steps under center. Takes a snap. Give in the round. Finding some running room on the owl. Oh! Ball came loose. They got him. They're, they're calling him. down on the play. On the carry was Braxton Baird. Well, Devin Ball comes out and blows him up. <laughs> you have thought that was a fumble. And uh, Malvern would have recovered. And <laughs> third down and five for the owls. Why does the clock stop? That's uh, running. <laughs> Shouldn't have stopped at all. Now, anyway, third and five for the Owls. They've gone for every fourth down in this half so far. You have to assume they will again. Yeah, hurry on the curry and yeah. carry. That's and he's hit immediately. That's that formation they tried and tried and they've gone. I know this guy, Johnny, this, this series, they've gone back to that tight formation. Yeah, he, East and West, they just basically conceding this game and uh, getting back to their bread and butter because they could not pass the ball. Loss of a yard on the play of the fourth down and six. I want you to give this, you know, we've talked and talked and talked about this defensive line. That's Mitchell Whitman, Eric Watson, Osa Johnson, Grady Allison. Those are the big bulls up front that are really doing a great job. Gill up under center, again a tight formation. They give the first man through, that's Curry. Good and job but Mitchell Whitman stopping him right in the middle of the hole. And uh, Malvern will take over and downs. Yeah, I tell you what, old Quentin Walker, 10th graders, getting him some linebacker action in there. Did a good, uh, Quante, I believe that may be Quante Walker. I haven't, yes. again, I apologize to Walker. Man. Be proud of him. I may mis mispronounce his name, but he's a heck of a football player. So he's nose in there and get it dirty. Congratulations, Quante. You're now officially a Malvern Lake. You're officially, you made it. You made it. <laughs> also, Eric, Eric Watkins, who somehow keeps getting called Eric Watson. Yeah. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right for the Leopards. Bryston in for Malvern. Bryson Barnes, that is. He gives to Trent Block, and Block is wrestled down after a gain of a couple of yards. Yeah, good. They're still hitting hard. McGee's not just giving up. I mean, this, this is a this is a program won a few state titles in the in the last few years, and uh, they've got a proud program down there <coughs> on Highway 65 going to Lake Village. They, you know, some seniors out there playing their last game, and I think it may be sinking in. Tyler Hader in for the Leopards as well. It's like we may have had a misalignment, and the Leopards scramble to get set up. Bryston Barnes under center, turns, gives to Block. Block looking for running room, nice makes a move. tackle. And he gets into Owl territory as he's brought down 
at the 47 yard line. Good shifty move. The play was supposed to come to the left hand side and he cuts it against a green, slices in and gets five yards on the carry down near the 47 yard line of the house. Like you what, if, yeah, if you want to, if you want to look what the watch tomorrow on Channel 13, what the future lepers look like. Marcel Bedford and uh, Brinston Barnes, Lane Purifoy, Trent Block are all in there, and uh, the future looks extremely bright. Barnes up under center. Third down and three for the Levels. They get the block up the middle, hit up the line of scrimmage, battling his way towards the marker. And we'll see how close he gets. They're going to put him at the 45, wow. so he'll be about a half yard shy. Uh, that's, well, that's not a good spot, but that's okay. Well, uh, he, <coughs> it's, it, he, there's a better. Now he's, and now it's a lot closer. Yeah. Really, really just, I think it's a little shy. Still, Malvern <coughs> needs the first down, and I think they're going to go for it. And they do. Barnes and company come back to the line of scrimmage. Block alone in the backfield. They give the block up the middle. He's got the first down. I got notice out here when we're talking about the, the aforementioned uh, Lane Pierford. He's running. He was started out number 13 as a quarterback, and looks like they're, they're he's running a tw 27, and they've got him out here running as a wideout. So uh, guys, I hope he can catch the ball. I think that's his dad's old number. I believe is that his dad's yeah, old number? I believe it is. Nick Ringo's in. For the Leopards as well. It's it's nice to see these sophomores, tenth graders, get some get some action out here, and and they, they you can tell they're fired up. Dejour Dawn in as well, split out to the far side. The give is to block up the middle, barrels his way across the 35 yard line and takes a couple of miles with him down to the 30. Well, well, that's what we were talking about earlier, Johnny, about him. The kid just runs hard. Uh, he does, and he just got that second and third <laughs> effort that nobody can't seem to get him down. <laughs> and, guys, this is the future of the Leopards, and they're moving the football. And, of yeah. course, this is demoralized owls that are out there on the field, and uh, but still they need to keep their hats up. Yeah, but it's still their number ones. First and ten for Malvern. Block again on the carry. Takes it to the outside. Hit there. He'll pick up about a yard on the play before three owls corral him. Five minutes and 56 seconds left in this one. The Leopards lead this one 38 to nothing. Uh, the Mercy clock is running, and uh, this one will be over in about five minutes and 45 seconds. Yeah. Coburn Gage coming into the game now for Malvin. Be another early ball game like we had last Friday night. Not a lot of passing, and uh, uh, clocks move pretty quick. Three receivers to the near side. One man split to the right. Second down and nine for the Leopards. Barnes up under center. Takes a snap. Give again to Block. Block breaks away from one tackle, but can break away from the second. He's dropped at the 30-yard line. And no gain on the play. It'll be third down and nine. Well, regardless if they throw it or pass it, the, the clock's going to run. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I got, a, I got a number coming in now. I don't have that young man on my roster. Justin, y'all be in a minute. Well, the referee spots the ball. They moved us a half yard back, didn't they? <laughs> Just, in the, the sideline judges are marking it near the 28. Never mind. I was going to say about Justin, y'all be He just blew a kid up a while ago. I mean, just pancaked him. Block on the carry again across the 25 and just... I, I overused the word barrels, but... Yeah, he is, he looks like a bowling ball going through there. Well, he, he runs downfield so quickly and gets the first down. I mean, it just another round of plays the Malvern Leopards can keep, continue to run this clock out. Chris Elliott, another 10th grader, goes in, and Brandon Keener, 11th grader, goes in and gets some action tonight. Eric Jones is in as well. Barnes up under center. Trent Block's getting a heck of a workout on this drive. He's going to get the carry again. Cuts across the field and be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Lost about a yard, maybe a half yard on the play. I don't know how many plays we've had in this drive, but uh, Trent Block's carried for all of them. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's he wants to carry that ball, show these coaches what he can do, and he really, he, he, he really does an excellent job. He sets up again in the backfield all by himself. Three receivers to the right, one to the left for Barnes. 
and Block will get the carry again, and I think that young man's about tired. He loses yardage on that one back near the 24, and that'll bring up third down for the Leopards. And the defense just knows that who's going to get the football, and yeah. Then, yeah. Uh, it's a matter of wherever, like you say, Johnny, wherever 43 goes, you know, let's go that way. You know, as quick as number five is, you'd yeah. think that you'd fake the run and just roll out, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Three minutes and counting, 38, nothing, Malvern. The clock continues to roll. Block again along the backfield. Two receivers to either side now. For Barnes and the Leopards. Fake the yeah, goes down rolling it. to his right. Barnes on the keeper, trying to find room to the outside. He'll get a couple of yards back. And that'll bring up fourth down for the Leopards. Uh, big old number 34 will do it all. To Combi Green uh, came over from his linebacker's top and, and knocked uh, knocked Barnes' his legs out from under him. Lane Purefoy back into the game for Malvin. That's one thing I didn't want to see, guys. Barnes came away with that one with a slight limp. Uh, it's a little tweak. Yeah, he, he got hit pretty hard out there by, by big old 34. Fourth down and we'll call it 13 for Malvin. Barnes drops straight back, throws underneath, pass is complete down to the 15, but that won't be enough for the first, and so the Owls will take over on downs. Owls take over on downs, but in two minutes we'll be two right here shortly, and, and rolling with the uh, mercy clock. It keeps clock keeps rolling on the uh, change of possession. The Leopards have this one quite in hand, guys. Let's talk a little bit about uh, about what we got next week going to Boonville. Well, it's a long drive up there for, for one. Uh, the best route, if anybody's going to be going up that way, you got to go up to Waldron. Yeah, <clears throat> near Fort Smith, between Waldron and, and Greenwood, take a right. There's a sign right there that says Boonville. Yeah. yeah. Right, and, you, and you go, I, I, I tell you one thing, too, based on what's happened. I, I know Coach Fogelman, he doesn't mind those road trips, and these guys are road warriors. Owls come back. Gill's still in at quarterback. He... Gets, gives the ball away. The Leopard defense wraps things up quickly there. So uh, this this bunch Johnny has shown they can go on the road and, and take on anybody. Uh, the one loss was you know one of the losses was to Ashdown and, and the Leopards really outplayed them and what you know won that one in the last half just didn't come up a little short on the score. Went to DeQueen last week under under Tuff and, and Mina and DeQueen on the road and come away with big victories. Second down and nine for the Owls. They give to Green. They've still got the number one offense in, and Green gets very close to the first down mark. It'll be about a yard shy. It'll bring up third down and a yard, or less than a yard. Well, if the Leopards can hold them for a couple more plays, they'll pitch a shutout. And I'm, I, I, I don't kind of think the last shutout we pitched, guys. One more play, and I think the Mountain will pitch a shutout. They can hold them, <laughs> but don't break. A lot of... New faces out there on that Malvern defense as Gill and company come back to the line of scrimmage. 20 seconds to go. Pitch far side. That is Green again. Green gets the first down and is wrestled down at about the 33. Oh, Hold him down. That's <laughs> it. They wound it in uh, nine seconds. This one's over, people. Leopards win this one 38 to nothing, Mike. Absolutely. Great game by the Malvern Leopards.